Almost a third of working age people in the country are unemployed, a startling figure that includes those holding tertiary qualifications. It's fertile ground for fake recruitment agents to seize on those desperate for work by offering guaranteed employment for a fee. In tonight's first story, we focus on one of the country's poorest towns and its richest city. The detail of the scams might differ, but the outcome for the desperate job seekers is always the same. Gripped by unemployment, with millions desperate for work. South Africa is fertile breeding ground for those intent on squeezing blood from a stone. Amid the unemployment crisis, one criminal enterprise is booming. Job scams. Unemployment is rife in our big cities, but the picture is truly dire in rural areas where opportunities are much more limited. Our investigation begins here in Matatiele in the Eastern Cape, where the municipality is the area's biggest employer. This woman, who we're calling Mpo to protect her identity, has been unemployed for the past five years. Unable to find work despite a tertiary qualification, she lives with her three children, her mother and other family members. Mpo's family survives on the social grants provided for three children and her mother's government pension, a mere 3,430 rand per month for a family of seven. Oh, Unable to provide for her family, Mpo approached a woman she was told could help get her a job. It was a decision she'd come to regret. So we want to nela, we can to nela in the work. We want to let them go. Bana, kuko into masana pe na funda na yo. Iko na i into angayenza. Achi into bana kuko i i post, but our targets advertise the creative. The job was guaranteed for a price. Mpo and her sister, who was also looking for work, were charged 6,000 rand for a surefire placement, close to double what their entire family was surviving on each month. Kubani, where were you getting Imali? Mpo paid over thousands of rands she could ill afford for the promise of a job, a better life. Andisiwe Mgenela is the cousin of the Matatiele local municipality's mayor. It's claimed Andisiwe started scamming people in 2020, promising her victims work at one of two municipalities, Matatiele and the Alfred Nzo district municipality. Her alleged scam centers on her connection to the mayor. Sunday is aside, on Monday or Tuesday, it's called the Monday came and went without Mpo and her sister hearing from Andisiwe. Then, weeks later, Andisiwe called them out of the blue, saying that they needed to travel to Kokstad, an hour's drive away, for the long-awaited employment meeting. A Z83 is nothing more than a standard government application form for job seekers. It's not an employment contract. What was supposed to be a three-day wait for the job promised by Andisiwe turned into weeks and then months. Mpo and her sister weren't the only people apparently duped by Andisiwe. It's alleged she pocketed money from several desperate job hunters. 
each time claiming the municipality was looking for candidates. In our search for Andisiwe, we met Sigiti and Nwabisa, two of her close friends. But our conversation takes an unexpected turn. Despite their friendship, it appears Nwabisa and Sigidi have also fallen victim to Andisiwe. Unable to help us, they suggest we talk to a personality central to Andisiwe's alleged scam, her cousin and the mayor of Matatiele local municipality, Sonwabile Mgenela. We finally reach him by phone. She's involved all these scams and then her parents are victims of that. She's a scammer and uh, something that we can never defend and refuse. It's an astonishing admission from the person whose municipality is central to his cousin's alleged scam. But the surprises don't end there. Mayam Genela tells us the fraud is far bigger than we thought. Uh, she was once arrested and then she was released and uh, you'd find out even the policies are involved with this thing. While Mpo's troubles were rooted in Matadiele, job scams are more common in our big cities. There's an endless stream of job advertisements on social media, many of them clearly fake. Following a tip-off, we home in on a building in the Johannesburg CBD, where we're told anxious job seekers are being promised positions by dodgy recruiters. Payment is demanded in cash and upfront. Our producer goes undercover. The inner city building is dark, run down. On an upper floor, we're introduced to James and Valencia. Skills trainers on the one hand, recruiters for high profile corporations on the other, music to any job seeker's ears. Truth to be told, we deal with um, jobs here. Apart from us being a college, all our learners, we normally send them to work. But it depends with how much you have also. Convinced he's onto a new target, James offers our undercover producer a certificate to help her secure the job. In the course you take here, you have a job automatically. Mm. If she had money, I was going to give her a me. Yeah. How much is a new job? Most of them is the Lam, I just think yeah. Within minutes, the deal is sealed without a job interview and 6,000 rand for a guaranteed job. We went back again, this time with our cameras. We're on the way right now to bust them. Hi, my name is Claire, I'm from Carte Blanche. I hear that you are selling jobs to people. We is that sell. true? We don't sell. Jobs. Don't what sell. are you saying you don't sell? Because I've got receipts here from somebody who said they had to pay 6,000 rand to get a job. Do you know it's illegal to sell jobs? Yeah, but, uh, but this is the thing. You can assist somebody to go and get, you refer to someone who will assist that person to get a what? Show us evidence, maybe contracts that you have with <laughs> Let us see it now. This is one of the companies that we are working with that hired one of our people. One. Okay. one. This is not a contract. It's not signed by anyone. I could have downloaded this off the internet. It's super generic. No contracts, no files, no working computers. Even the telephones are just part of the scam. Then another surprise in a story full of surprises. We were told Benny was unavailable. Benny Bongerman. This wasn't our first visit. James and Valencia were the dynamic duo we exposed four years ago. Our undercover operative recognized him as Benny before he could exit the building. Back then, James went by the name Benny. These alleged scammers merely reinvented themselves. In 2019, Benny's recruitment was demanding 300 to 600 rand from unemployed people to set them up in a job. Four years later, the two are still duping desperate job seekers. Kani Maravit from APSO, the country's largest recruitment industry governing body, says the industry is ripe for scammers and fake recruitment agencies. The recruitment industry is not fully regulated. As a result, it just uh, opens up opportunities for scammers and bogus recruitment agencies to actually mushroom across the South African landscape. 
we got our money back from James, many others, like Mpo and her sister, won't be that lucky. Mpo, still unemployed, is barely able to repay the 600 rand monthly interest she owes the loan shark. Unsure where to turn, she's out of work and drowning in debt. It's 600. Where are you getting the 600, Sisi? <laughs> Because 